Michael Pierce is well known on YouTube and the MBTI community for his long form dissections of the 16 types. He wrote a book in 2020 that's right here. It's called Motes and Beams, A Neo-Jungian Theory of Personality. We discussed the book. We discussed how we got into typology. And we discussed the great question, which is, if you were going to start a project or an endeavor, which of the four MBTI types would you choose? And he has a very good answer there. And then I asked for some worldly advice for the INFJ, of which he is one of them. So please enjoy this interview. So Michael, how did you get into the MBTI and Jungian space, the, the psychology, all that? What, like, where was, what was the catalyst to getting to where you are now? Well, I, I think I might have told the story in the, one of the appendices for Motes and Beams, but um, the, I, I remember it pretty well. I was with a number of friends and we were just hanging out and somebody, somebody actually, I think it was me, um, <laughs> brought up Chinese Zodiac astrology stuff, right? Um, because it's always fun when you have a group of friends together uh, uh, to be like, oh, we're going to read off each other's personality types and from, from you know, the, the Zodiac wisdom right. or whatever. And, you know, it's always different on different sites. And <laughs> it's always especially fun when with the Chinese Zodiac because it has like matchups with it. And so it was just silly stuff like that. But um, I remember after it just sort of intrigued me because I more than I expected because I liked the idea of there being insights into what's really going on in people. And so I talked with um, an INTJ friend of mine, um, very good friend of mine. And uh, I was explaining this whole thing and he was like, have you ever done the MBTI? And <laughs> I, maybe I had, but I hadn't remembered it, you know, cause a lot mm -hmm. of people in like middle school or whatever have done <laughs> it. But so I took his advice and I eventually ended up taking it and it, I, I was, I don't know how to describe it, but I think a lot of people have had this experience where you read, I took the test. Uh, I think it was on truity.com. Right. I don't I know if truity. they offer Yep. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they offer free tests anymore, but um, that's where I first took it. And then I went to personalitypage.com to, for the description. And so that was sort of the first real description. And halfway into it, all of a sudden, I just had this epiphany while I was reading it and realized this is, descri it's not just describing like surface characteristics, it's describing how my mind works in a way that I thought only I knew and only I would ever know. And that was just going to be my tragic <laughs> life. Right. And then suddenly they're explaining it and it wasn't at all like frightening. It was incredibly invigorating because all of a sudden I realized it's possible to describe this sort of stuff. Like, and other people think it, it just like, it blew my mind. I felt invigorated tremendously by this like realization of self-knowledge like the world opened up i mean it really was this this very memorable experience and so um after that i just kind of continued i wanted to understand it and i don't know if i've ever mentioned this but i do remember i think it's funny that one of my motivating my original motivating thing that sort of got me obsessively looking up more and more info <laughs> was because I wanted to, I didn't want to just understand my personality. I wanted to understand the personality of my, my perfect soulmate, right? Because I'm this young, I was younger. I was in, um, I was just out of high school and, <laughs> and romantically lonely, I guess. <laughs> and so I'm just like, I need to understand this. And so it drove me to try. And conveniently, one of the, the personality page recommended the ENTP and the ENFP. And right. so I'm very sort of sheepishly trying and the ENFP is all the different functions. So that forced me to, so I just kind of continually from, from a sense of dissatisfaction with my own understanding of it, um, have continually tried to refine my knowledge and been driven, like really driven there. There's been long periods where I've, I've haven't gone a day without thinking about, about typology and, I think since writing the book, that's calmed down a bit. It's like it kind of culminated to that. But um, 
yeah, that's sort of the story in a nutshell. Okay. But, uh, now, and I always tell people that the reason I'm so obsessive about typology and MBTI is that it's sort of like, I mean, I don't have, you have glasses, but I have contacts in, but the first time I put glasses on, yes. I was like, is this what the world looks like? Like now it's a totally different thing. Now you can't ever go back. There's no yes. way to go back. Yeah. You're done. You're finished. You will never get out of that rabbit hole. It's yes. a good rabbit hole, uh, even if yes. you get obsessive about it. But once you see it with the clarity, like once it's in 4K and you've been seeing the world in standard definition, you just, you'll never take that, take that um, lens off. So um, you've mentioned the book and I have it here. I have read it. Oh, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, uh, you can't see the highlights because it's the glare, but I have highlighted a lot you of it. highlighted it. Sorry, and, that, uh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> no, I have to, you have to highlight. I mean, it, book's not even read. And unless it's like a hardcover oh, yeah. first edition, you know. No, I, I suppose. I would so, highlight yeah. it, but... Um, so this is, you know, your magnum opus, you know, some would say, and, um, so t tell us about writing it and then what's the feedback you've received? Yeah. Um, well, the first thing I would say is that I, I, I hope I'm planning on writing other books, not necessarily on typology. So I hope it's not my, my magnum opus. Cause I hope okay. to improve even more, but I, 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 that's not entirely, well, that is true, but um, <laughs> I would say in terms so far of my knowledge of typology, I would certainly call that my sort of magnum opus, my great work, because um, a lot has culminated with it. I started writing it, um, I think I talked about this in that appendix too, but um, I'll elaborate. I started writing that when this, it was probably four, five years ago or something, when I sort of had the very first inklings of a draft. I didn't even think I it would ever get to any kind of a publication level, but I just wanted, I learn by writing. Um, I write scripts because it, and not just scripts for myself, but I have to write it thinking that I'm going to write this for somebody mm -hmm. because that forces me to think about the concepts with a rigor that I may not get if I don't feel that pressure of <laughs> other people could read this and say I'm crazy. So it's right, like, right, right. I better make it good. Yes. Um, so I learn a lot through that process. And so that's part of why I started writing it. And then I just kind of wanted to, I just kept, I don't know, I just kept going on and off for several years until finally it started really, it just started really flowing. I mm -hmm. found it was teaching me stuff and it was a great way to consolidate information. And I just decided I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to actually try to get this to be public published. So I, I started reformatting it from just a regular word document to something to basically how it looks now in the book. Like from an early stage, I was thinking about formatting because that just helped me to get into the headspace. Um, and I, I, excuse me, I started from one end and I worked my way like Michelangelo to the other end. <laughs> it's not exactly like Michelangelo because I did <laughs> skip around a bit, but I, I have to, I had to sort of build everything. Um, and then I, I um, uh, had to go back and, and stuff. Um, it, it, especially near the end, writing the book was... It was really maybe because my feverish brain is, <laughs> is um, uh, because COVID hit. Right. And in some sense, that was helpful. I'm sorry to say almost because I didn't have to, I, my work was disrupted in the way that it was. And so I could just stay at home. And so literally near the end there, I just stayed at home and for like eight hour days would just work on it and yeah. would just have all my books um, and was reading through stuff and trying to hammer out the last bits. And I, at the same time, I was going back through some of Jung's works and reading stuff I hadn't read before. And so it was like, it, it, there was feelings sometimes because I was reading Memories, Dreams, Reflections as autobiography. And so there were moments where it was like I was, I don't want to say communing. That makes it sound like it's too mystical or something. But it was like, oh, I'm, I'm, it, I feel this, this, kinship to a certain right. extent with this guy and um so that was almost kind of special but what's anyway, the feedback kind of... been for you oh right. yeah oh see the pro the problem is um 
<laughs> it's the feed. Well, first of all, the, the feedback has been wonderful. Okay. I have been very happy. Uh, even just hearing something like that, you have, have felt it was worthy to mark, to mark it up in order to remember things because I, I mark up all my books and my dream is to write books that people will mark up. Like I mark up my books. There you and go. so to hear little things like that really, really make me happy. And, and to do interviews and have people, you know, praise the book and yes. <laughs> all these things, you know, it, it obvi obviously makes me feel good. But um, uh, uh, I did start by saying the, the problem and, and hopefully this won't make me, hopefully this won't make me sound uh, too uh, narcissistic isn't the right word, but um, it, it must be that I'm greedy because there's almost a part of me that's like, but there must be more. There must be more that people, people aren't telling me how great my book really is. I think that's the greedy, immature part of my personality that's sort okay. of in the background there. That, that's all I mean by that. Right. I, I have to it. poke fun at myself or I'll, I'll start being too serious. I did give it five stars on Goodreads. I don't really leave Amazon, even though Goodreads is owned by Amazon. I, I go more to Goodreads. So I feel like anything above a four is really hard to get on Goodreads. So I gave it a five there. Well, There's that, probably, that is... Really? That is, I thank you. Yeah, I all my all my joking about liking to be praised aside. That I do, I do. You know, appreciate there that. was if if I could if there was any I don't even have criticism. I just have some parts that I found um, yes, more please. esoteric was like the Chinese part of it. Where oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a this is tough even for me who's like really into archetypes and that sort of thing. So I don't have a question there. I I just wanted to let you know that like okay, like the, you've covered basically yeah. what I want to say. There's you bring it all together. Like there's not just like, here's all the different aspects of Jung and Freud and whoever. It's like all the different types of cultures that I've dealt with it. And then you kind of bring it together in a, um, a way that's digestible. And I like the graphics and the, the designs and stuff there. So that's fine. But I don't want to get off on a tangent there. No, uh, no, what I want no, to no. ask, um, and this is a fun question and I know you've been preparing for it, but I have not heard your answer yet. So I ask all the people in the type community this. Um, if you could assemble a team for a project, any endeavor activity, what would be the four MBTI types you'd choose? <sighs> Including okay. yourself. So you have INFJ plus four people. Oh, okay. INFJ plus four people. That's what I, that's what I figured. Okay. So the, the magical five number. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll just go for it. The first, for some reason, the first type that keeps popping up in my head is ISTJ. I'm like, I should have an ISTJ on the team. I don't know why. It's probably because I've had, I've, I've had a number of interactions with ISTJs. I had one as a roommate and we actually got along rather well. Um, I don't think we understood each other, but we got along very well. <laughs> Very well. I think that's the INFJ ISTJ relationship most of the time. I was thinking ENTJ. That was the other one that I realized I would, when I hear projects, so some of the, I, these might all end up being thinking types actually, because I hear project and I'm like, okay, but those are the other ones who I've worked with and oddly enough have gotten along rather well with the ENTJs I've met. One of my um, companions on my ecclesiastical mission, one of the people who um, I was with like 24 seven was an ENTJ and we actually got along really well. Um, uh, it, it, um, I like how everyone says, uh, like they say ENTJ and they go, we actually got along. <laughs> As oh like, yeah. Well, you know, it's just impossible <laughs> to get along with. <laughs> well, it's not, I don't think I've ever not gotten along with the ENTJs I've been with. It, it's, you know, the oddest thing, I don't want to go too far off on this, but the oddest thing is I actually feel like I've, I've had more, it don't, don't misunderstand me. It's not that I've, I've not gotten along with ENFJs, but I've almost felt Maybe it's because I'm more similar to ENFJs. And so there's more like, there isn't as clear a division of labor. Whereas with the ENTJ, their realm is so different most of the time that we don't, there isn't as much chance for conflict. I don't know, but um, I would want an ENTJ because they, ISTJ, and then I'd have to keep the ISTJ and the ENTJ from murdering each other. Because <laughs> <laughs> the ISTJ very meticulous will will you know and and has this wry sense of humor and the estj is much more or excuse me entj is much more um 
uh, future oriented and has this much more like power and energy and it's the <laughs> SE that they really want. They, it's yeah. like they secretly really wish they were an SE dominant type. Right. Um, so e ISTJ, ENTJ. Um, my idea here was I wanted to have one from each quadro. Um, and I think I would want an ENTP because they would be our devil's advocate probably. Right. And they could, uh, ideally they would not be a jerk, but <laughs> would be willing to tell us when something didn't make sense and would be able to kind of keep things more in line. It's important to have, um, and again, I've had good interactions with, I've had good interactions with all the types. What am I talking about? <laughs> um, but yeah, it would be a helpful sort of to um, get that get that questioning perspective so that you always have that other side of things, even when sometimes the other side they propose really is preposterous or just isn't helpful, but you need to have <laughs> that. Um, and finally, uh, I will go with either ESTP or ISFJ. I'm leaning towards ISFJ because um, even though we already have an SI, I think they would be a good foil for the ENTP. Um, and also because I, I, they're very, I just, I just like them. They would, they, I call them in the book, the conscience, and that's sort of kind of what they would, they could be in that, in that group. Um, and I, I think that would provide a nice rounding out. The, the only reason I would, I would suggest ESTP is one, because I could potentially fulfill some of the functions the ISFJ would, and also because um, I've never worked on a project with an ESTP before, and I just want to know what would happen <laughs> because <laughs> I—that's not entirely true. I did—I did do some stuff with an ESTP, but I'm still not sure if they were an ESTP or an ISTP. I'm still not quite sure, but um, that's my long answer for you. Um, okay, and it's interesting because I've started to collect some data on this question. Um, I asked Frank yeah. James the other day, and he said, number one, you got to take ENTJ no matter what, number one. Like, oh, he really? Took, okay. So he took ENTJ. In the interview with me, he said ISTJ, but then he later changed it to ISFJ. Then he okay. chose ENTP like you did. But then he okay. said, you know, if we want that creative art artistic, I would either choose ESFP or ISFP for like okay. any sort of creative artistic person. Oh, you know, that, that is a good, that is a good idea. Um, I respect that. It's I, not I like, it's that. just interesting to hear that. I mean, you guys are both INFJ, so it's interesting to hear like what the INFJ would want. Yeah. Would um, and I, I would say, you know, ENTJ, ISTJ, ENTP, and then ESFP as well. So I just think that's an eclectic mix. You need the yeah. NE type to counter out the NI type just to yes. kind of shoot holes and break stuff and just see what yes, works the preposterous yes. stuff so it's it's really interesting to hear that now um so being that you're an infj yourself what kind of worldly advice can you give to the infjs as they navigate through life yeah i uh thinking about thinking about things like this because people will ask me and normally I don't know how to answer because I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't know how to give life advice to, to people based on their type. But as I really thought about it, I realized actually, at least in the case of INFJs, I do. Um, and I think the main, a couple of things, in my experience of myself and also other INFJs, um, the, the INFJ is marked uh, I actually go as far in the book as describing it as there's a tendency to an almost messiah complex where there's this sense of, because that's how we're built to see something, you see this insight, and then you're like, I must share this knowledge with the world because otherwise everyone's going to tear each other apart. <laughs> like there's this sort of like compassion for the world, but also kind of an arrogance there in the sense of I have the answer, but it's like you're built that way and there's advantages to that. So the problem, so my advice would be that that is, that is, that's how you're built and that's a good thing that can drive you to 
um, come up with stuff that other people wouldn't think of and to have these, these insights that other people wouldn't think of and to have the desire to figure out how to communicate them and really help people. I mean, one of the things you can tell an INFJ that I, I, I think anyway, that can really hit their souls to tell them, you changed my life, you know, or, or, or even just you told me something that no one else had said and that has really helped me, you know, that, that's almost like an ideal compliment, I think. But my advice would be, don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> don't fall into the trap. Because I think it's, 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 I've seen it in myself, which is why, and, and it's, I don't, I don't think I've ever expressed it, which is my goal, but I've seen how as you dive into reading and you see things that other people don't see, there can be a tendency to think that you are like, it almost can be like a messiah kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. I am going to take this message to the people and like no one has el else has thought of this before. <laughs> I'm smarter than anybody else. Like you start thinking these things without even realizing it. And it's like, you, you're going, you're going to trip and choke. I, <laughs> and I see this in historic INFJs. Like I'll see this in young. I think young struggled with this as well, where he really, because the problem is he does have brilliant insights and he and he criticizes himself for this and he calls it ego inflation but he clearly at times was kind of full of himself okay <laughs> for you know and and he but much to his credit he strove against that and so mm -hmm. i would say um and i think also sometimes he had a bit of a messiah complex where he felt like he out of compassion for people he's like i want to help them but don't take yourself quite so seriously. Be willing to laugh at yourself and to say, I, I'm not the smartest person and in the world. Someone else probably thought of this and I'm probably going to trip over myself and that's fine. that's fine. I don't need to be Jesus. Okay. <laughs> you just need to be, you just need, you, you know, you just need to do some good in the world. Right. So. I don't know. Okay. Uh, that, that'd be sort of the big thing of advice, I think. Yeah. And I've heard other INFJs say things like, don't get all caught up in being so rare of a type. Like, yeah. because your type's rare doesn't mean that like, you've automatically ascended to the, the best type. Like, you yes. could obviously be a underdeveloped or like you say, unhealthy INFJ. So there's a, there's a sense that once you get that, much like the INTJ, it's like, I'm INTJ, so I'm, I'm, I'm the best without like yeah, any self-reflection, exactly. what that means. Yeah. Yeah. So um, last question, um, cause I think mm. we, we got, we got a good amount of time left is, um, and this is another question I'm going to start asking people in the community is why do you suspect certain people or maybe it's certain types are against the assessments or personality type in general? W what do you think that's about? It's that's, it's an extremely interesting question. Um, which I've, I've thought about a lot. And I, I mean, the easiest cop-out answer is there are many reasons why people don't like type, but I think the, the, I think the reason that is the most interesting and probably the most common too is um, <laughs> maybe this is oversimplifying it, but it's that they just simply don't understand the use of it. They, they don't see what these things mean. That's almost, that's one of the problems almost is, and why it can be so hard to define these things is because it really is, maybe it's just because we're on I types and this is how we think anyway, but it's, <laughs> it's like we experience these personality functions. Like we see them in other people. It's not that we read about them. It's that you see them because it's so, it's so hard to describe them. It's like this experiential thing. And once you see it, then you see the value of it. And I think a lot of people, the people who don't like it, who are on the inside, don't like it because they, they, did, they did feel like it began to define things in a way that was negative. But a lot of people on the outside just simply haven't seen it. And they just assume all they see is dry concepts that are being used to hammer people in. And they also, you know, they'll meet, they'll meet people who, um, you know, really do use it almost like a cult kind of thing, you know, <laughs> like it yeah. can get really bad. 
I've, I've seen it get bad, but it's a big question. I'm sorry yeah, I'm and, going and all a, over it's the not, place. But. The, there's many different, like you said, there's many different answers. And I think the most common one is what is like, well, I don't want to be put in a box. Um, yeah. Which is kind yeah. of like a cop out one. I think, I think the real reason people get a little bit upset at it is that um, if you define something, if you define yourself in a certain archetype, then that comes along with some weaknesses that you have to face. And most yeah. people aren't really interested in like finding all the negative things about themselves because then they have to like deal with it. So the people that are like, I don't believe in that stuff. I just work really hard and I could achieve what I want. It's like, I think there's a little bit of like, I don't want to know what I do wrong sometimes or what yeah. I need to work on. And that's you hard know, for me. I, I would also say, um, and you made me think of this, that I, I, I think it's very likely that there's a lot of people um, like ISTJs or ISFJs who um, will won't get nearly as much out of descriptions of themselves as um, say an INFJ will be because there is that tendency to and and I I think it's a lot of it simply comes from the uh, the rarity notion of that well there's more ISFJs out there so they're less special. And so they're kind of the, the, the mm. people, the regular people, right? And so the descriptions of them will be very regular and people aren't regular. No one is regular. Yeah. And, and it's, it's really, and so I wonder how many people who, who, uh, who normally would be much more interested it, that we just, we, we struggle. And I know I struggle because I'm not an ISFJ right. and there's a part of me that does not find SI particularly interesting. And it's just hard for me to, to um, I shouldn't say it that way. I do find it interesting, but not in the way I, I find my own functions interesting. Sure. So, so I don't know, that, that might be another, another element of it. Understood. Um, okay. No, that's, um, that's just, a, um, you know, as you get, more into type and then you get really excited about it especially people that are just learning type and they start telling their friends about it then there's going to be a lot of pushback so i always like to hear like what what are some of the like tactics for saying well no like type is real i mean personality yeah. exists there is such thing as personality yeah. we're not all the same um we have certain innate talents and weaknesses and um for i think types like our type who really like to know more about ourself is maybe that's that greediness that you were discussing earlier. It's like, I don't, tell me more about how great my book is. Type, type <laughs> yeah. And that's, sorry, excuse me. That's, that's my, what happened. So, um, do you have anything else to add? Because I think, um, I've asked, asked all the questions that I would really like to know from you. I think my audience is really excited about, um, about this. So is there anything else you want to just let the audience know before we go? I, I, not that I can think of, but, okay. um, you know, uh, 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 feel by all means, uh, please criticize my book politely because otherwise I'll get too on my high horse. That's what I'll say. That's <laughs> yeah, how so I'll end. Gotta take you out of the ivory tower, but yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's a good way to end this because I will be posting um all the the links. I think just the Amazon link or wherever you want your book to, you know, if you have an affiliate link or whatever, in um the description here. But Michael, thanks so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Honored to uh, have this book and I'll just show it one more time for the audience. It's Motes and Beams, a Neo-Jungian Theory of Personality. Appreciate you uh, taking some time with me today. Thank, thank you so much for having me.